Right. Let's uh, let's start by going back in time a little bit. We'll go back to March. Sunday, March 6th, DCW Championship Chase. There was a tournament that night. Vic Viper and I were facing off in the semi-finals. I was on my way to victory. But a family against sinners come along. Kev Rocks, Brother Skelly, Sister Laura, come along, haul me off. Mid-match. And the referee sees this. This is clearly in his line of vision. And rather than disqualifying them, he counts me out in the true sense of logic, as we know it. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. At any rate, after that show, I was missing. For two months. Where was I? Well, rumours abound, as they will. Uh, some say I was off partying on the Jersey Shore, others say I was out hustling checkers on the beaches of Trinidad and Tobago with the locals so I could earn my money to get a flight back to Ireland for some reason. Where I actually was, was in the uh, evil clutches of the family against sinners, as they tried to break me down with a sort of a low budget clockwork orange style method of brainwashing to get me to join them. And last week, Brother Skelly comes along, sticks his promo up, he claims that he broke me. And that at Anarchy in Artane, they would be unveiling, sick, a new broken bingo balance. It didn't exactly turn out like that now, did it? I lay down, as instructed, Vic Viber went for the 1-2, I kicked him in the head, and basically showed him I'm unbreakable. You guys are <laughs> way too gullible. You think that's what it's going to take to break me down? I'm not like Kev Rocks, I'm not like Skelly, I'm not like Sister Laura. I've got a strong mind. Most people go to the gym, they, they nuke their quads and they blast their delts and they work the old glutes. I work my brain. Big juicy brain to withstand brainwashing and all manner of things that could be thrown at me. I'm not malleable. I can't be broken. Not, not the mind anyway. Regardless, big fiber, I had you. I hit the G17, I had you down for the 1, 2, 3, but Skelly pulls the ref out of the ring. Costs me the championship. Now, logic would dictate that seeing as the family had me in captivity for two months, that I have come back to seek a bit of revenge against them, that perhaps on the next show I would face Skelly to avenge the injustices that I have suffered at their hands. Again, logic would dictate this, but uh, logic seems to be a dirty word around here, so I'm just going to whisper it from now on. Logic has been thrown out the window in this case. Logic has been shit canned. And why? Because after the match, for some reason, Andy Phoenix comes out with his briefcase. I'm like, oh my god, is he going to cash in his briefcase? No, oh my god, swerve. He hits me with the briefcase. <laughs> uh, fantastic. So, being the uh, sort of goldfish memory type baby face that I am, I'm going to just instantly forget about all the injustice that I've suffered at the hands of the family. Yeah, I've just put that aside, put that aside, the fact that that's been built up for the past three months. No, I'll just move on to, to Andy Phoenix, because I don't like being hit in the head with briefcases. Logic. So, Andy Phoenix, let me just get into character. Andy Phoenix. You hit me in the head with the briefcase. I don't like being hit in the head with the briefcase. You're going to be there at Blanchardstown. I'm going to be there at Blanchardstown. Bash in Blanchardstown. Blanchardstown Bash. Whatever the bloody hell they're calling this next one. We'll both be there. How about we have a wrestling match? What say you? There you go. Done job. I assume you'll accept. We'll have the match. 
Godot. Let's go for it.